Hey, my name is CJ and I make videos about tech. But today, instead of talking about the tech I normally talk about, I'm making a video about the tech I use to make videos about tech. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. Again, I'm your host CJ, and I know a lot about PC tech and consumer electronics. I've been building, modifying, and repairing computers since the, well, 80s. I have a background in electronic and computer engineering and information technology systems, so when I decided to do the YouTube thing, sliding into the PC and tech niche just made sense. However, what I really knew nothing about is, well, this tech. You know, the camera equipment that's necessary to make videos for the internet. See, my experience with professional camera gear was minimal to non-existent prior to starting my YouTube channel. For the past two decades, my camera has been, well, just part of the phone in my pocket. Prior to that, I had simple point and shoot digital cameras and well, I'm dating myself now, but before that my cameras required well, film. So the biggest challenge in starting this channel was figuring out what cameras to get and then well, how to use them. So what I'm gonna do today is take you through my progression from how it started to how it's going, mistakes I made along the way, and what I learned from it all. To maybe help anyone out there who has an area of expertise you want to share with the world, but like me, you may not know where to start here with the right camera, audio, and lighting gear. Now, instead of starting off with where I started, I'm going to start with where I should have started. See, before I launched the channel and posted my first video, I spent hundreds of dollars on cameras, but I already had a great starter camera in my pocket, and you probably do too, and the best part is I know how to use it. There's really no learning curve. Cell phones used to be phones with a camera thrown in. Now, they're cameras with a phone thrown in. Look at phone reviews nowadays. They're 80% about the camera and rightly so because the tech has come to a point where image quality is on par with professional cameras like these. As an example, I have all my cameras with me on the desk right now. So I'm recording this video on my iPhone 12. I've also filmed all the B-roll you're going to see with the iPhone. This is what I should have started the channel with. I could have saved a lot of money and the quality of my earlier videos would have been much better because the main camera I started with is this Lumix G7 and this is a great affordable camera. When I got it, they were between six and $700 new. Right now they're between five and 600 new. I got this one used for 400 and I went with this because it was the best value 4K camera at the time and it had some great features. It shoots 4K 30 FPS or 1080p 60 FPS video. It's compact. It has a flip out screen, clean HDMI output, Wi-Fi app control, everything I was looking for really, but there are also negatives. First, it does use a smaller micro four third sensor. Combine that with the small aperture kit lens and low light performance isn't great. The HDMI output doesn't work while recording, so monitoring from a distance in front of the camera wasn't really possible. And of course, there was a pretty big learning curve. Aperture, shutter speed, white balance, ISO, frame rate. I had a general idea what these were, but not exactly how they all work together and how exactly they affected image quality. So there was a lot of trial and error and some not so great results in some of my earlier videos, but the biggest issue I had with this camera was this lens and its poor low light video performance. The widest aperture is just 3.6 with the lens at 14 millimeters. Punching into 42 millimeters reduces the aperture to just 5.6, so already not much light getting in, and trying to compensate with ISO or shutter speed just leads to image quality issues. The only way to compensate was more light, so I would put up to three of these big light boxes as close to possible as to my face. So that's why you see me squinting so much in my earlier videos. Because of that, 
I retired this kit lens and bought this $150 Lumix 25 millimeter F1.7 lens, which has much better low light performance and produces a much sharper image. So this is essentially the main camera setup I used for almost two years. Now, at the same time I bought the G7, I also picked up this Panasonic's Lumix FZ300. This is essentially the same camera as my G7, just with a 25 to 600 millimeter F2.8 fixed lens. I use this as my B cam and I actually use it almost exclusively as an overhead camera. I went with this particular camera because again, I picked it up for a really good deal and having the same A and B camera producing the same image makes matching footage in post well, painless. Now, before I get into the new main camera, let's talk about everything else that goes with the cameras. First, I'm not a vlogger, so I'm not holding the camera. It's fixed, so that means tripods. And for these relatively inexpensive compact lightweight cameras, I have very inexpensive tripods. My main tripod, I just had, but it's like a $40 tripod. For my second camera and for a lot of my B-roll shooting, I picked up this very basic $50 tripod. For handheld shots, I picked up this shoulder rig for around $80, but it's only been used twice. However, the footage from both those videos was great. And my wife got me this motorized camera slider, which has been awesome for stepping up my B-roll footage. Now, the two things that are just as or even more important than your camera selection is good lighting and audio. I'll start with lighting because you just need adequate lighting, not necessarily expensive lighting. And I use a combination of light boxes and these really cheap clip-on light fixtures. Now, the soft boxes are these generic 20 by 28 inch soft boxes. They use a large 90 watt bulb, height adjustable stages, and even came with a carry bag. And I picked them up for under $40 per set. I have one set I use for my key and fill lighting, and I have a second set, which I have ceiling mounted above the desk to light my overhead shots. Now for ambient lighting and rim or edge lighting, I use these basic clip-on utility light fixtures with a plethora of inexpensive bulbs, RGB, colored LED, spotlight, cool light, warm light, whatever I need to supplement the shot. And I got these for six to $10 from Home Depot. Now, probably more important than good video quality is great audio quality. Viewers will forgive less than ideal video quality, much more than bad audio quality. Now I knew this going in, but I still tried to save a buck and I started with this very cheap lavalier microphone system and the audio wasn't horrible, but there was no noise reduction at all and the mic was overly sensitive. It picked up every little clothing rustle and most annoyingly, every little mouth noise. It sounded like I was chewing gum while talking. So again, that was short lived and I replaced it with this $200 Sennheiser XS wireless lavalier system. Sennheiser is just the pinnacle of audio gear. So this lav system was worth every penny, but it's still wireless. So regardless of how good it is, there's always gonna be a loss of fidelity because of that. So I recently upgraded to this Sennheiser MKE 400 shotgun mic, which has a balanced XLR connection directly to my camera because while I don't use built-in camera mics, I do still capture audio on the camera because it just eliminates the extra step of syncing external audio in post, like I'm doing for this video, as I'm using the MKE 400 and capturing the audio to my main workstation using Audacity. So that's been the progression of my AV equipment up until last month, when I made a significant upgrade to this Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K Pro. Why I chose this $2,500 camera comes down to my workflow, what features I needed and what I didn't need and of course value. The two main reasons I went with the 6K Pro is first, 6K. Now I still edit on a 4K timeline and output and upload 4K video, but using 6K footage on a 4K timeline gives me so much more flexibility and that I can punch into that 6K clip without losing resolution, which is hugely beneficial to give some movement and angle changes to my otherwise static footage. 
And second is the Black Magic Raw and Gen 5 Color Science. I edit in Black Magic DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is a great editing suite for any footage, but it's tailor made for Black Magic Raw and the Gen 5 Color Science update, which is awesome. Unlike my warmer, subdued look today, I like to use bright colors in my videos. I use bright colored background lighting, I wear bright color shirts, and with very literal effort, I'm able to grade the footage exactly how I want it to look. Also, if I mess up during filming, I can correct the raw footage, change the white balance, ISO exposure. This is something I couldn't do with my Lumix footage. Then there are the other features, the large built-in tilting display, the ND filters, which will be great because I plan on doing some more filming outdoors. It has two XLR audio inputs that provide 12 volt phantom power to my MKE 600. I also love the programmable function buttons. I have them set to toggle on and off the clean feed, the LUT and false color. And then there's the configurable HDMI output. So I can monitor everything on my 15 inch display from well in front of the camera. Now, there are features this lacks like continuous autofocus and in-body stabilization, but again, I film statically, so those aren't really useful features to me. There is punch in autofocus, and I'm able to control every function of the camera from my phone, so I can do everything I need from in front of the camera. And finally, the 6K Pro has the Canon EF mount, so I have lots of great lens options, which brings me to lenses because that 2.5K only buys the camera. For lenses, I picked up a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f 1.8 art lens. This is probably one of the most commonly used lens in the YouTube world, and for good reason. It delivers awesome quality for a great price. This lens goes for around $750 brand new, but keeping with my MO, I got this one used for $540. This is my main workhorse lens, as it works in basically any situation, but for close-up shots like talking head videos, I got this 50 millimeter f1.8 lens. This one wasn't used, but only cost $125 new. Now, a 6K camera requires some serious storage media, and for full-frame 6K Blackmagic RAW, there's only one USB-C drive on Blackmagic's compatible list, and that's this Wise Advanced one terabyte SSD, which comes in at $350, and it's what I use for all my A-Roll footage. Now, I film most of my B-roll on the 6K Pro in 4K UHD ProRes 60 FPS, and this much cheaper Samsung T5 can handle that footage. So I can shoot all my B-roll either before or after I shoot the A-roll, and I, then I can edit directly from these drives and then transcode and ingest the B-roll to my storage pool later after I get the video done and published. Now, I'm not attaching almost $3,500 worth of camera to a $50 tripod. So I also picked up this Magnus Rex VT5000 tripod. It's rated for 17 pounds, which is plenty for the camera. I did get this new and it was a great value at about $270. The last piece of equipment I'll touch on is my beam splitter teleprompter. If you watched my intro video, I explained I have trouble with speech due to a brain injury. I got shot in the head and now I don't talk too good. I have trouble finding words sometimes, but I can read words, so the teleprompter is an integral part of my setup and probably the best $200 I've spent. So in total, my primary camera setup cost about $4,600, which for me at this point in my YouTube journey isn't bad. The channel actually makes a little bit of money now, but if you're just starting out, that's probably way too much. So my advice, concentrate on your content first. If your content is engaging, people will watch. Start with what you have. The phone in your pocket is probably more than adequate to get started. In fact, I know creators that have hundreds of thousands of subs that still use a cell phone to film all their content. The first place to invest is in lighting, which doesn't have to be expensive, and audio, which there are some great options out there that aren't hugely costly. Something like the Rode Wireless Go is a good option. With the correct adapter, the receiver can be used with iPhone or Android, or you can record to it internally. 
If you're doing podcast type content, there are a ton of great microphones from inexpensive to more expensive options. Then as your channel grows, you can grow your creative arsenal. Anyway, that's been my progression. Hopefully this has helped someone out there. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments. While you're down there, be sure to hit that like and maybe consider subscribing so you can check out the content I make with all of this gear. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.